What up gamers, I'm Sir Mav and welcome back to another weekly update of Anthem where I present to you the latest info discussed from the dev team. This past week we had another live stream from the Anthem developers where they went into detail over Fort Tarsus, discussed a little bit about the vault which is where we store our inventory and some other neat facts along the way. We also learned there's a closed alpha in the works for December and I'll give you all the details on how you can enter. Since it was a fairly short live stream, at the end of this video I'll let the live stream play so you can get a good look at what was showcased with your own eyes so stay tuned. Be fair warned that they did have some technical issues during the stream so there will be some echoes and frame drops. There's another giveaway coming soon so if you're interested, which I think you will be if you're watching this particular video, be sure you subscribe and get updated immediately when it's out. Now let's talk about what we learned this past week about Anthem. Let's dive in. So first let's get into the live stream. Although there was plenty of technical difficulties with the live stream between the internet and the streaming software XSplit that the M Anthem team was using, we did acquire quite a bit of information while within Fort Tarsus. The stream was hosted by none other than Mike Gamble, a lead producer for Anthem who we all know and love, and Sabina, a level designer for Anthem who works primarily within the Fort Tarsus realm. While Mike started the stream by discussing Ben Irving's unfortunate incident with his petting zoo business, the screen was showcasing the menu screen. This was intentional as Mike wanted to showcase that the stream was indeed on ultra settings due to the comments made during the Paris Games livestream. On the screen you can also see different tabs up top showcasing the course of the map, the social tab which we'll likely use for inviting friends and other players, pilot skills where we will be upgrading our pilot skill tree, and the settings tab which of course had the ultra settings. So the way this stream was supposed to go was Mike and Sabina were going to showcase a bit of Fort Tarsus and then switch over to the Lost Arcanist mission at Master Difficulty level and showcase what they had changed about the mission since we last saw it during the Paris Games livestream. Now when you're finally watching this part, ignore the weird static echo during the stream. Again, technical difficulties, but as Mike comes out of the setting menu we see we are fairly early in the game where we meet up with our cipher, Owen, in the Freelancer Enclave. Mike and Sabina did make a point that this is the beginning of Fort Tarsus so as you progress through the story you will start to see things change and the fort come alive with different things in multiple areas. Also being that this is an alpha build it's more about connecting groups of players and making the multiplayer elements sync properly. So some places may be bare and some things may have been taken away as they are testing more of the server and tech capabilities which the Fort Tarsus pieces do not particularly stress. A good example of this would be Yaro's bare room behind him during the stream. As a senior freelancer mentor, we know he has some stuff and relics to showcase, so just keep that in mind when you watch the live stream for yourself if you haven't seen it yet. Unfortunately after that the stream cut out, again those damn internet tubes, but once it came back it cut back to Owen in the freelancer enclave. Along the way out of the enclave to the forge we come across a cypher statue holding a bronze sculpture of the Moravian star. Once we get away from the statue, the team comes out into the market where you'll see some stores still unavailable at the moment. Quickly to the right we come across a sentinel. If you didn't already know, these are basically the guardians and order of Fort Tarsus, or as Mike and Sabina agreed to call them, the fantasy police. Further down the market, as Mike continued to claim multiple cortex pieces which provide us with lore over Anthem, we pass this dealer named Prospero. What's interesting about this guy is Sabina alluded to learning more about him later so we don't exactly know what he does currently, but one of the helmets on the table had a skull and a triangle logo replicating what we saw in the E3 2017 trailer. We also can see this logo on the map during the first gameplay stream after E3 2018. It's always been theorized that this could be a raid or some sort of elder game boss we could face so Prospero could indeed be our elder game market dealer. Of course we don't know for sure until it's confirmed. More on that info as it's revealed. There was an area further on after Mike and Sabina showcased the Strider Bay in the live stream that Mike stated will be discussed at a later time. Apparently there is some amazing things through these big doors that will be showcased in a later stream. Unfortunately the current build that they were in did not have what was behind the doors available for us to see. As we move on further we got a glimpse of the vault within Fort Tarsus. This is where we will sort and store all of our gear and inventory that we find in the world of Anthem. I am curious to see though who this woman is that is working in the background. Then as we move further into the stream the team showcased some role playing and how we could interact with the characters within Fort Tarsus. This is where the team transitioned into night and showed a video of where we had a chat with Zoe at the forge. We know that we will have binary choices to make while interacting with NPCs from the Our World My Story panel so this is just another example of these interactions. Nothing too dynamic here but we did get a sense of our characters precarious and reckless nature through the dialogue with Zoe. 
Unfortunately, there again was some technical issues with the stream causing frame drops, so Andrew stated that they would have to cut it short today, which meant no Interceptor gameplay this time around. During the stream ending Q&A, Mike accidentally, I'm literally doing air quotes right now because I believe this was incidental, triggered a cutscene on the forge. The cutscene is one we saw showcased within Our World My Story trailer a couple months ago. It included Owen, our cipher, and a Corvus agent known as Tassin entering the scene with a sentinel by her side. I'm going to showcase the scene here now because I want you to pay particular attention to the facial expressions on the characters and how Owen interacts with Tassin at the end of the scene. It'll give you quite a laugh, but it also gives the impression that Tassin is not someone you want to mess with. Again, there is an echo which I tried to cut out the best I could through the audio, so know that in the game you will hear it much clearer than you will hear. No, no one, one knows, knows more about, about the dangers, dangers shape shape or artifacts. artifacts. I'm, I'm confident, confident that knowledge, knowledge and, and his own resourcefulness will keep, keep him alive until you find, find him. him. What do you what say, Lance? Answer. We'll make it worth your while. while. Owen? Owen? Looks like the freelancer is right, right, right again. again. Well, well, us, us anyway. anyway. Excuse me, I just got a. That's excellent. I'm going to run my diagnostics. Let me know when you're ready to leave. It was a pleasure. Heck of a scene, eh? It's not much, but you definitely get a view of the unique personalities that will be showcased in Anthem. And that facial expression from Owen with that smirk is just on point. Can't wait to dive into the story and learn more about the world of Anthem. As I stated before, there was a short Q&A at the end, but honestly most of it has been answered to us before. So you'll see it showcased here on the screen, and feel free to pause the video here if you want to read through it all. As they closed out the livestream with Mike launching into the Lost Arcanist mission, he stated that on the next livestream they will bring in some other guests on the team, showcase some other missions and gameplay. Mike also stated that Ben Irving had promised to showcase progression and loot stuff within Anthem, so look for this in a future livestream. Now I know this livestream had its difficulties, but I have no doubt the team will regroup and come back with even more hype material within the next stream. Knowing Mike's personality, he's not going to let this go down as his last showcasing of Anthem. If you watched the stream already, let me know your thoughts down below on what was showcased. Was the technical difficulties too much that it didn't have your full attention? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now let's get into what we learned from Twitter and other sources. If you were curious about the sensitivity settings within Anthem, Ben confirmed that they will have options to adjust our flight and look sensitivity, but he's not sure if tight aim or ADS will be in its own separate option. Anthem has also been nominated for the most anticipated game for CBS Gamers Choice Awards. So if you haven't already voted, go out and do so. I've left a link down in the description box below for you. Casey Hudson, the general manager of Bioware, will also be there on December 6th where they will also get a chance to view a new Anthem trailer that will be showcased during the event. Here's the 22nd teaser. As usual, once this full trailer is released, I will have a full trailer breakdown on the channel after its showcase, so stay tuned. It was discovered this past week that we have two new names that have popped up in the cast via IMBD. Their names are Trey and Amis, who we don't know much about just yet, but according to Mark, they are two people in trouble in the world of Anthem. As we've seen in the gameplay of Anthem, there will be times when we come across two enemy factions duking it out. They won't stop fighting because we showed up, but we will be attacked if we get too close to their feud. For those of you looking for themed events and an ever-changing Fort Tarsus, Mark confirmed that we would probably see seasonal decorations in Fort Tarsus around and during specific holidays. Currently there are no javelin specific emotes in Anthem, but this could be something we see in the future expansions of the game. A Twitter user asked Mike if there will be an Iron Man vinyl available within the game. Mike replied that it would be cool, but they currently have not approached any companies like Disney to make it official just yet. As I stated before, the customization for Anthem is quite limitless in the aspect of design, and we'll have multiple possibilities in making our javelins our own. Within the artwork that was released with the limited edition art book of Anthem, it showcased an image of a woman with ranger javelin armor being created and placed upon her, and a sword being handed to her. Mike confirmed that this was indeed General Helena Tarsus, which we will learn about more in a later date. So stay tuned as we get into more details on the Legion of Dawn closer to launch. John also reminded us that discovering is half the fun, so likely we won't get all the details about her via live streams. 
I know what you've seen in Battlefield 5, but this won't make it into Anthem. There would not be a ragdoll effect such as the case if you were hit by an Ash Titan your javelin would slide across the ground on your back. Ben stated that this won't happen as the team doesn't want you to lose control of your javelin while in combat. Crafting currently does not have a build time like Warframe. In my opinion, I'm happy to hear this. Nothing against Warframe, but I think my time would be better spent grinding for materials and adventuring across the world with friends to acquire said materials, then having to gather up all of my supply and then have to wait an hour or a couple of days to acquire what I created. What's your thoughts on this? Do you agree on no build times or do you have a difference of opinion? Let me know down below. Again, we have another statement in that Anthem is not a Destiny duplicate. There is no restriction on masterwork weapons and gear like Destiny 2 does with their exotics where you can only equip one exotic weapon and armor in your gear slots. Man, my analytical side is just beaming with curiosity on how they will implement stats and perks within the game. I can't wait to see what kind of builds we can create and how they can be utilized within the game. And yes, there will be all sorts of weapons in Anthem including hand cannons and revolvers. For you Bioware fans out there, Casey Hudson released a November update about the workings of Anthem and the potential future of Dragon Age and Mass Effect. I placed the link down in the description box below so you can check it out for yourself when you're done with the video. Someone asked the developers why the Anthem team was showcasing so much on livestream and through other sources if they wanted it to remain a mystery. Mark stated that the reason they are sharing so much on the game right now and since E3 is that they want everyone to understand the game before jumping in. This game is different than anything that Bioware has ever done before, but no need to worry as there are still lots of surprises in store for us once we jump in. Mike also provided a reassuring statement in that Anthem is huge. Even if they streamed every few days till launch, you still wouldn't see it all. Which I mean, if you've been following since the beginning, there are many stories of these secluded places deep underwater and in various areas across the map. I have no doubt we will have much to explore once we dive in. Now, the news you have all been waiting for. Yes, there is a closed alpha that is taking place on December 8th through the 9th with four different time sessions. This will be an opportunity for some lucky freelancers to stress test the servers and have their first chance to jump into the world of Anthem. Just know that everyone won't make it in and those that receive the email invite will have a higher chance than others to make it in the session. But the developers appreciate everyone's interest in jumping into the game. I posted a link to how you can sign up for future playtests down in the description box below and if you make it in before tomorrow, December 3rd, you may have a chance to get into the closed alpha. Emily, one of our favorite game designers for Anthem, gave us a bit more insight on what goes on at night in the world of Anthem. We've heard before from other developers that dangerous things come out at night, but according to Emily, evil things can come out in the world of Anthem regardless of day or night cycles. Can't wait to find out firsthand for ourselves. If you watched the Incredibles movie lately and you're afraid that the storm's cape might get sucked up into something, well you're just going to have to stay clear of fans and gears as you will not be able to unequip your cape. It just it comes with the outfit. Currently there are no plans to include upgrades in flight speed for our javelins in Anthem. The plan is to keep the squad relatively close to one another, but the devs want your feedback on flight speed when you do get a chance to jump into the game. We may or may not get a chance to see developers battle a titan in the livestream. Ben stated that taking on a titan is best experience for the first time by you with your hands on the controls, but he said it's up for consideration. Me personally, I would rather them not show this on a stream just for the simple case that I do want to experience firsthand for myself. I feel that if they showcased it, it would take away the fun of figuring out how to tactfully take down one of these things. What do you think on this? Should they showcase this in a stream or do you want to have this experience for yourself? Let me know down in the comments. We received another revived screenshot from Mike Gamble this past week. Apparently since Ben Irving was still not out on bail from his recent arrest of koala smuggling, he couldn't come and help Mike up during Anthem Friday. Hope you get out soon Ben. Stop smuggling koalas. Our friends from the Freelancer Codex channel found some info on a potential future stream from one of the devs. Apparently in January we could see the devs showcase the Tyrant Mine Stronghold mission in max gear and max difficulty. Of course, it's not in the books just yet, but I'm sure as we get closer to January, we'll hear more on this. The Freelancer Codex team also spotted this mural from the stream as well, which looks to showcase a javelin going up against some sort of titan in the world. There's also a sword showcase between the two beings on an altar at the bottom of the image. Could this be General Helena Tarsus? Is there a legendary sword placed out in the world that we'll have to uncover? Time will tell. Last up, I just wanted to showcase some rad images we saw this past week from the dev team, including some landscape shots and another really cool interceptor image. And there you have it gamers, thanks for tuning in to this week's update for Anthem. As usual, I posted a link to the weekly update on the Fort Tarsus website within the description box below if you want to see the links for yourself. 
The rest of the video will be the live stream clipped together as one, but since there was difficulties during this stream, expect to hear about the next live stream sometime early this week. Keep it locked here at iGame for all the latest info on Anthem, and don't forget to ring that bell for future updates. I'll talk to you next time, gamers. This is Sir Mav, signing off. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ah, thank you. Thank you for waiting. We had a bit of an issue. The tubes of the internet disconnected, and we had to reconnect them. Many people lost their lives in doing so, but I'm very glad that you guys waited and stayed. Uh, hopefully, you have something on this stream which you totally love and can tell everyone about. Yeah, we're so excited. Finally, finally. So, um, a couple of kind of housekeeping things up front. Um, obviously... Uh, uh, ben Irving is not on this stream, so here, uh, there's a story behind that. Ben actually got arrested last night. So what Ben was doing was trying to smuggle koala bears into America, and he's doing a petting zoo in his backyard. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the authorities caught him and arrested him. So you're stuck with me for this one. My name is Mike Gamble. I'm one of the producers here uh, at Bioware, and uh, with me I have Sabine. Sabine? Yeah, I didn't know about that. Ben. <laughs> no, unfortunately, it's, it's a it's a secret. But un unfortunately, not our, so much anymore. <laughs> our our thoughts are with Ben uh, on this. So um, we're going to show you guys a couple of interesting things today. There's some some news, some recent stuff about some closed alpha thing or something like that. Whatever that is, don't know about it. However, we're going to show you some content that may or may not be in that build. Uh, give you a bit of a sneak peek and kind of uh, give you an idea of what to expect in it. So we're going to do some Tarsus first, uh, and Sabine and I are going to talk about, about Tarsus, we're going to walk you through some of the content, then we're going to switch over to a mission, and then we're going to do the Lost Arcanist mission and tell you what we did. Okay, so first thing we're starting on, hopefully everyone can see the screen. Um, good, perfect. Thank you people over there telling me that. This is the graphic settings tab. I wanted to let everyone know that the graphic settings are on point in this stream, so good. I just I want to see Tarsus. No, I wanted to make sure graphic settings are important. I don't want to hear about it through YouTube later on. Tarsus. Yeah. Okay, so Tarsus. So here's Fort Tarsus. Now when we get into the game for the first time in Tarsus, Tarsus is a little bit more abandoned than it usually is, Sabina? Well, the mood is a little bit that it's on the low side. So you come in at the point and uh, things are not the greatest and start off by saying, hey, I've seen better days, Tarsus, especially for freelance. What you see right now is the headquarters. Call it the Enclave. Okay. So the Enclave is your starting point, and right now, a lot of rubble, things junk in the way. Lots of junk. Lots yeah. of junk in Tarsus. Um, right, so here, as soon as we start in Tarsus, this is relatively early in the game. Uh, we've got Owen over here. If you guys don't know, Owen is your cipher. Um, you and Owen met a couple years ago, kind of on like a, you know, job board or something awesome like that. You'll find out the real reason later. But Owen's here and he's waiting to talk to you after the first expedition. And over here, who, who's this guy? This is Yarrow. I see a little bit Yarrow as a mentor and um, he's one of the senior freelancers. And also you can probably tell that the, the space that he's around, that's a little bit of his space. Apparently it's empty, but we'll fill it out. Yeah, yeah. So this, as you said, the kind of the, the stage of, of Tarsus that we're at right now is uh, I think people are a little bit more down on their luck. And uh, as, as you play through the game, Tarsus will change and you'll see this place come alive in different ways. Uh, so before we kind of get into the crit path or, or the story stuff that we want to show you in Tarsus, let's, let's go look at a couple things and kind of go through what your thoughts are and Sabine, you are one of the uh the principal designers here on Fort Tarsus, correct? I'm a level designer here, yeah. Yeah. So your job is to kind of go through with the artists and with the writers and really create 
um, this space and kind of design it from the ground up, right? Yeah, so essentially my work is of uh, being able to get all people to pitch in to a ready autarsis, make sure we have an image where they are worse, called out, I work with writing, level uh, artists, and um, even sound and VFX. Yep, to kind of create the whole experience that you see. Yeah. Right. So part of Tarsus, obviously, we have, we have things to collect. Um, I just collected a Cortex entry there, and it, it gave me some lore on something in particular. Uh, another thing I want to call out, because this is kind of the, the closed alpha type build, this is really mostly a tech test of how we connect as a group, how everyone in the world kind of comes together uh, to, to make the multiplayer thing sing. Uh, we pulled out a lot of content from Fort Tarsus to make it so that the focus of the test is tech related, right? So obviously there's going to be areas in Tarsus which seem bare and conversations which aren't hooked up yet and things like that. And we want to make sure everyone understands that's not the purpose of our tech test here. So for example, Yaro. When you see Yaro for the first time, you'll be able to speak with him and you guys can chat. And, uh, and we'll actually probably cut to one of those things in a little bit um, once we get kind of up top. So show it again at another point. Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry you couldn't see it. It's just like TT. Yeah, yeah, but Owen is actually pretty disappointed in, in this whole thing right now. As you can see, Owen is just kind of, you know, upset. <laughs> anyway, don't worry. There's there's more to this stream than than sorry, just Owen. crashes. All right. So, what what that conversation did is it basically had Owen tell us that um, uh, someone wants to talk to us, right? Yes. So. Essentially, we're gonna go out of the enclave right now and head our way to the forge. I think you know it. And on the way, I'm gonna grab a big book. Oh, grab the book. So, what is that? That is a cipher statue. Hmm. Cyphers is uh, what Owen is to us, so basically the one that are patient with us during missions and also just, just a contact point in general between. Um, Cities as well. Right. So every every freelancer team has a cipher, or sometimes more than one. They basically are are really important to how freelancers get their job done. But they are really rare in our world. Yeah. Rare indeed. Oh, so we've come out of the freelancer enclave. Where are we at now, Sabine? Walk straight into the market. So this is the market. We will have a store a bit here. There. We have vendors. And if you look to your right here, you will see a sentinel. Now, what are the sentinels? What do they do? It's their jam. We'll be and talk about what Antium is to sentinels. So, Antium, sorry, Fortarsis. I meant to say Fortarsis all the time, sorry. So, Fortarsis is a place where sentinels um, have their stronghold, and we're right now under their protection. Uh, in the in Fortarsis, we also have the enclave, enclave for in. Actually, I can't pronounce that right now. I'm sorry. Enclave for the freelancers. Okay. So they are guarding and they're making sure that everything is under order, in order. And yeah, you will especially see them around the market because it's the lively place where people come and go. Right. So so sentinels are kind of like the police, uh, essentially inside Fort Tarsus, correct? I guess you could say that. I want it to be a little more fantasy, but yeah. Yeah, F fantasy police. That's yeah. Perfect. <laughs> it's like it's like hot cops. It's just awesome. But that, but but they have they have javelins. That's important too. Yeah. yeah. And they have that color scheme of being like blue, light blue. Yeah, kind of like police, but not just like fantasy police. Fantasy police. All okay, right, let's gotcha. go with that. All right, good. Okay. I'm so, semi okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of walking through this market, as we mentioned before, um, this is this isn't a part in the game where Tarsus is still. Uh, it's 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 a little bit down on its luck. Um, the market is still full of people. Yeah, if you actually keep going uh, straight down towards the forge. Oh, hi, Prospero. Oh, oh who's this? Hi, it's Prospero. You'll get to know him later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You'll be able to talk to him, and he'll he'll tell you some stuff and show you some stuff, right? Yep. Let's let's just wave to him right now and just say hi, and we'll come back later. But he's got all this cool stuff. Like, yeah. There's a skull on his helmet. Like. Oh, yeah, Mike. As I said, like, later. Like, like, Okay, this okay, is fine. a later moment. Fine, fine, <laughs> fine, fine. All right, we're moving towards the forge area, correct? Yeah, I want you to actually look a little bit left and right here as well. So you can tell that uh, a couple of the stores are closed at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's one there, and then mm -hmm. if you look behind you, there's also a couple of closed stores. 
And you will see more sentinels hanging around, guarding places. Oh, yeah, there's some more sentinels. Yep. Oh, let's wave to Zoe. This is Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Hi. What up? I think she pronounced it so. So? Yeah. All right, so by that name, I'm going to call her Zoe forever now. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, still having that trouble. <laughs> I'm like, Zoe, because I saw it first being written. Uh -huh. All right, so you got more, more sentinels hanging around. Oh, what's this? Oh. You're oh. revealing all my secrets. Don't Cortex! <laughs> I pick up another oh. book. The, the fine, fine. Reveal everything. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, what are, what are those? You there. mean uh, the, the background? The scaffolding? Yeah. So I call it, uh, we call it the Strider Base. Um, that side right now is just a scrapyard part okay. to break down and, and get materials. So if you look to the other side, we also have another Strider Base. Actually, on the, it's more of a vista view. Right, I'm gonna go try to get people a little better view of it. Um. Yeah, oh, there you see it. there's a Strider, hey, there's a Strider. As I said, Strider Bay. Uh -huh, uh -huh, it makes <laughs> sense. Right. Uh, through these doors, uh, uh, a bunch of amazing grandeur and awesomeness exists, uh, aka l literally an, uh, the other like <laughs> half of Tarsus plus more, uh, but we're not going to go in there. And actually on this build, you're not able to get in there. This is just the marketplace and just the freelancer enclave kind of down those steps in this build for Tarsus. But we're going to showcase those other areas in greater detail later on. Yeah, don't want to reveal everything. That's right. Uh, okay, um, anything else you wanted me to call out or focus on? Well, you probably want to go and have a look at the vault, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, let's do it. So the vault is what? Uh, it's essentially uh, your inventory, I would say, where you can see everything that you've gotten through the missions, and you can scrap down and clear your inventory because it has a limited amount of space. Right. You'll get materials from it as well. Okay. All right, so the vault is going to be useful to all freelancers coming in. Uh, More Cortex entries. Oh. Fine. I'm not going to that one. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, let's go up top for you. Maybe I should hide those better. Uh, <laughs> maybe people just want to learn. Oh, hey, welcome back. Hey, Jones. Eh, not so good, Jones. Oh. Again? Those, those things, things are getting, getting too bold. bold. What, what did you, you do? Drove, Drove as hard as I could to shake them. Next time, see if you can find a clip. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. 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 Not a fan of those two. <laughs> they're, they're quite sassy. There might be more to it. Oh, there is. I'm sure you know all about that soon. Oh, actually, I <laughs> I, 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 don't know everything. <laughs> um, all right. So we wanted to show a little bit of what we kind of call role-playing uh, conversations. And... That is usually when you go into an NPC and you click on them and you can have a dialogue with it. Um, guys on the streaming side of it, if it's not too possible, can we bring up that video just to show everyone? And then Sabine, after we go through, you kind of walk us through what mm. that was. By the way, Mike, I don't appreciate you calling them it because they all have personalities. Oh, right, right. They're actual persons. <laughs> they're full-fledged people. Yes, living my inside people. Our, our tiny box of the game. <laughs> my people. All right, let's take a look at the, at the video. We are, yeah, we are going to try this. Uh, you know, like like Mike said earlier, we've have had a little trouble with XSplit today, but we're going to try this uh, this conversation. Okay. Look who's back in one piece. So, did you expect me in more pieces than one? You? Never. I trust you've brought me work. Always good to give your javelin the once over after a run. What have you done this time? Nothing you can't fix. Flattery, huh? You must have done a number out there. Nothing too crazy. Are we using your skill for crazy or mine? Scars, beasts, relic-based nonsense. Some people stay on this side of the wall. Others? Well, since you love running into that kind of stuff, you better be careful. The job's got its risks, but I keep my eyes open. That's what I like to hear. I'll run you some maintenance checks. Only the best for my favorite freelancer. I bet everyone's your favorite. I have a complex ranking system and do have better places to be. Go on then. All right, so that was one of our role-playing conversations in Tarsus. Um, uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about Zoe and, and what that conversation was. 
Do is essentially the first person that you will see when you enter Tarsis and she's gonna be there for you and fix up your suit whenever you're exploring Tarsis. You can of course have your hands on the suit as well and fix it up through the forge. But yeah, you'll get to know more about So in the game and throughout the game. And many others, of course. Mm -hmm. Many other people. Yes, thank you. Not its. All right, <laughs> perfect. Okay, there was a big crash in the background. I hope something didn't fall and the server didn't crash, but let's assume it just all works. Uh, anything else you want to cover, uh, Sabine, uh, while we still have the folks and we're looking at Tarsus? Anything you want to call out? Anything you want me to show? Yeah, well, I don't want to show anything more than what you already have because I want people to explore. I want them to get to know the people of Tarsus. And as a little teaser, there's a courtyard and we have a bar. And a ton of fun people. There are a couple of stories that will tug at your heartstrings, a couple of stories that will just make you smile, and a couple of them that just makes me want to come back from the mission to hear what it'll continue as. Awesome. Yes, and every good place needs a bar. That's what we've learned, I think, over the, over <laughs> the, the last couple of years. Uh, okay, with that, so that kind of concludes the, the Tarsus section of the, of the live stream. Next thing we're going to do is jump into a mission. Uh, and to do that, uh, we're going we're gonna to swap some folks out first, but we want to do some questions ahead of that before we kind of make the overall transition. So, um, AJ, do we have any questions about Tarsus that Sabine can help answer, or are there any other ones that you want us to answer? Just throw it up on the screen, and we'll go from there. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Um, we are seeing some frame drops as well so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the stream oh. today uh i hate to be the bearer of bad news uh and we will try again at a later time okay, uh, okay. so sorry mike <laughs> oh you got you know i'm gonna have to pay for this publicly people are gonna get mad at me thanks, thanks. well yeah okay everybody will see it <laughs> here's what we'll do is as soon as we possibly can we're gonna get back in front of the camera and we're gonna show you guys uh how um uh the Lost Arcanist mission has been changed over over the, the last little while. We've gotten a lot of feedback from the fans, so we'll do that. As you guys can see, I was I was ready to to, to so close. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's so an interceptor. Close. I was just gonna jump right in, and we we're just uh, the interceptor right. looks so slick. Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. If we start dropping dropping frames, then then in a really 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 bad way, then we'll have to cut it. But let's let's move forward. And so, um, are we doing questions. We are doing questions on Tarsus first, though. So let's talk a little bit more about Tarsus and have some questions from the folks. All right. Uh, will f I'm sorry if I'm being too loud. Uh, will Fort Tarsus evolve throughout the years as we play? That will come with the future. Tarsis parts, you will see a certain evolution, not evolution, oh my gosh, evolu evolution? Evolution. Evolution. Yep. Throughout the game, and then what comes after that is for the future. Yeah, we got plans. We got, we got big plans. Yes. Uh, another one here. Uh, will there be books, etc.? And you kind of showed this off, but if people are just joining us, uh, will you have books and things to read to get lore? Uh, or is it just sort of a codex type system to find all the stuff? Well, it's kind of a combination because you pick up books and scrolls, maybe notes, that is the codex. <gasps> oh, I just triggered oh, something accidentally. Hey, wait, everyone. What are you talking about? I just got a message, message from you saying to meet you at the, the forge. forge. I, I didn't send any. Where did everyone disappear to? Where did everyone disappear to? My name, My name is Tess. Hey, Tess. You always travel, travel with security escorts? Yes, not, not always. Not always. The Sun Sentinel Foundation. Well, you, well, you make a hell of an entrance, I'll give you that. I have, I have a contract, contract for you, for you freelancer. freelancer. I like to I like know who I'm working, working for before I take a job. job. Really? really? <laughs> From what, From what I, I hear, two of you will take about any job you can get these days. What's the job? An Arcanist's gone missing. I thought Arcanist just hung out in the lab studying Shakespeare relics. Matthias Sumner was investigating some relics at a ruin near the fort. I need you to find him and bring him back home safe. If he's still alive. No one knows more about the dangers of Shakespeare artifacts. I'm confident that knowledge and his own resourcefulness will keep him alive until you find him. What do you say, Lancer? 
We'll make it worth your while. while. Owen? Owen? Looks like the, the freelancer's, freelancer's right, right again. again. Well, well, us, us anyway. anyway. Excuse me, I just, just got a... That's, that's excellent. excellent. I'm going to run, run my diagnostics. diagnostics. Let me know when you're ready, ready to leave. leave. It was a, it was pleasure. a pleasure. On behalf, On behalf of myself, of myself and Matthias, thank, thank you for, you for doing, doing this. this. Uh, okay, okay, and, and if, if I, I have... Find Matthias. Find Matthias. Trust, Trust me. me. I'm a I'm person, person you want to know. know. Find Matthias. Fine, Tyus. So before we get back into more Tarsus questions, uh, what happened in that scene, Sabina? Tell tell everyone a little bit about what who those people were and what they do. Well, this was a follow up of the scene that you missed before, when Owen told you uh, to go to the forge. So you went to the forge and like, oh, what's happening? Tassin is there. So Tassin is part of the Corvus uh, agent part. So she will be giving you missions. And this is the first mission that she gives you. Right. So she's definitely someone you want to know, as she said. She's very, just yeah. connections, essentially, right? She's respected and a little bit feared, I would also think. She has connections. All right. Good. Okay, let's continue with the Fort Darcy's questions. So. Let's keep going. AJ, you want to jump in and give us some more? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so... Uh, one thing uh, was brought up about uh, Shaper Storms. Uh, is Fort Tarsus subject to Shaper Storms at all? Not right now, but we expect to see things past this version. So what you're saying is Tarsus will change. We just don't want to talk about how yet, right? Yeah, I feel like I, I don't want to talk about it right now. <laughs> I think you're spot on there. All right, let's take a couple more. Yeah, uh, we're seeing some drop, drop frames again, so um, oh. we're gonna we're gonna do a Q and A here, so we we can salvage this, guys, mm -hmm. and then and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Um, can our choices? Result in utter and complete extinction of those poor little grabbits. <laughs> oh Please tell me no. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Who asked this question? <laughs> no, uh, no, I, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, but no, it's not no. possible to do it in the game. Is it me versus you? Should we fight over it? <laughs> You'll win. You'll win. It's okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so could your decision in Fort Tarsus affect co-op play? Uh, and this person asks... Um, I mean, if I like made some decision, my friend, uh, my friend made another, and we were not able uh, to do some activities together, something like this. Right. Good question. Uh, so no, that that does not happen in the game. So a decision that you'll make in Tarsus will affect your Tarsus and will affect uh, versions of your story. But when you're out in the world and you're playing with your friends, the decisions that you make will not affect that cooperative gameplay. And, and the reason we made that is because if you make a decision and your friend makes a totally different decision. Those could be in conflict with each other, and we don't want that, so that'll never happen in the game. All right, we've got another good question here. Uh, do we have any chance to align uh, with the factions in Fort Tarsus? Uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have a couple of factions. We have the Sentinels, the Arcanists, and the Freelancers. And all of them will actually give you some benefits the more you help them out. You will get unique rewards from each one of the factions. Cool. All right, one more, guys. Uh, will there be any way to check end of mission results either at Fort Tarsus or at uh, the end of missions, like kills, deaths, damage taken, etc.? Not in Tarsus, but I'll leave that one to you, Mike. Yeah. So there's a bunch of stuff that we're tracking. Um, after you finish the mission, you're going to see an end of expedition screen, and that's going to resolve a lot of your loot, see what you got, the experience points that you got, and a whole bunch of other information. Behind the scenes, we have a, uh, access to a whole bunch of information that we're using to push player challenges. So, you know, kind of the, everything from the basic do this number of headshots to uh, 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 side with this faction as many times as, as, as you choose. So there's it goes from, from the minutia to the large. So we're kind of doing both. Um, but we will definitely talk more about that as we approach December. 
which is like one day. Yeah, away. I was gonna say that's like right there. Yeah, very soon. All right. Okay, so uh, we're gonna close it off here. Um, two Aww. things I wanted to mention. I know. I'm. I'm we'll, we'll bring you back, Sabina. You're you're a good guest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but all the action. <laughs> I know, I know, and and folks don't see it. Uh, so I wanted to apologize. We're gonna we're gonna sort this stuff out so that next time the technology and the streaming stuff works. Uh, the build itself is holding up surprisingly well. I'm really happy with it. Uh, so it's just the technology right now. We're gonna sort that stuff out for you. Um, we appreciate everyone kind of jumping on and asking questions and engaging with this. These things are always a risk. Whenever you do things before launch, you're always opening yourself up to to crashes, bills, and otherwise issues. I was really excited to play Lost Arcanist mm -hmm. with a uh, Interceptor on Master difficulty, no less. But that'll have to wait until next time. Um, in the meantime, we thank you guys. We really appreciate your support. Yeah, thank you so much for joining. Um, just a little shout out here because this is my very first stream. I would like to just give a shout out to my little sisters, my little twin sisters. Nice shout out to Sabine twin sisters. And Amanda, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so next next time we do this, uh, we'll bring some other guests on as well. We're going to showcase a couple missions. And Ben Ben Irving has promised to talk about progression and some loot stuff at some point in the future. So hopefully uh, we get to that then, if XSplit and the internet tubes holds up. All right. Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time. Bye.